18 to 24 year old bracket. Anxiety is the lead cause of burden of disease. And from Augusta all the way to Dunsborough, from 2014 to 2018, there was 50 suicides. But everyone you probably know is affected in some way in that community and those suicides have rippled through. This is a significant issue and we need to put it on the floor to make sure we're doing our part to make sure we don't lose another friend. What we're about to do is we're about to go through a lot of interviews with professional surfers in the Southwest, exploring mental health stories, education and ways of support. There's been a lot of learning, there's been a lot of pain, suffering that's happened in these people's lives and they've come to a point where they feel comfortable enough to share that, to inspire young people to be the best versions of themselves. Taj Burrow doesn't need no introduction. He's seen as a, one of the most significant leaders in the Southwest community. In some ways, Taj has seen it all. He's been on the world tour. He's been traveling. He's been in isolation. He's been in an extremely competitive environment where you're pushed to perform to the highest levels. And you're often faced with significant disappointment. Uh, well, my name's Taj Burrow and I'm here in Yelling Up Beach, Western Australia, where I was born and raised. Um, I got into surfing uh, basically because my parents surf, both of them surf, so it was inevitable I was going to surf one day. Yeah, I became a professional surfer just because I love the sport so much and yeah, managed to make a career out of it. Did uh, 20 years on the world tour and now I am here back in Yelling Up, retired from those 20 years of competing and um, just enjoying this beautiful place with my uh, family. As good as being a professional surfer is on the world tour, it's incredible lifestyle, but it is pretty challenging. You know, a lot of overstimulation when you're in a big contest arena and there's, you know, commentators and judges and a huge amount of spectators and you're out there to perform and you're getting allocated scores for each wave you catch and it's a lot going on. And when you're competing, you know, you do lose a lot more than you win. So you really need to learn how to cope with those losses and for me it was tough. You lose when you really want to win and it's just tough to deal with. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, I just have to kind of revert to why I got into this sport. It's because I love it so much. So if I lost in a contest and I was just furious and sad and upset, and I would just go and have some time on my own and, and go surfing and then just realize, oh, hang on, this is why I got into this sport because I love it so much. Not just for surfing, but any kind of athletes that have competed and then have to go through the transition of becoming not an athlete anymore, but just transitioning into a normal life. It's a very difficult transition, especially the surfing industry where if you're not right at the top, it's really hard to make good money. I've had a number of friends that have just been, you know, like at the top level in the world competing surfing and then next minute, you might drop, lose a few heats and you fall off the world tour and you are just booted. You've just gone from the best lifestyle in the world to absolutely just kind of rock bottom and you just have to reevaluate your whole life and work out what you're going to do from there on out because that little dream of, you know, professional surfing can just be snatched from you so quickly at any time. And then you find yourself, you know, booted out in the cold and so many people have had to go through that transition and I know it's the same with so many athletes. It's a rough thing to deal with, one of the roughest. Yeah, I think everyone, including myself, has mental struggles at times. Definitely had a lot of down times in my life and I never really thought of it as a mental health thing. I just would like sometimes just be upset and grumpy and then really sad at points. Like a lot of people say growing up, there wasn't much awareness about mental health, little education or much knowledge about it at all. 
and obviously in my generation at least, you kind of brought up to just be a bit tougher than, you know, explaining your feelings to a friend. It's considered weak if you're talking about emotional stuff to another bloke, I guess. It's something that's quite necessary as we realise these days and, and I feel like people are becoming more comfortable with maybe reaching out to a friend if they're not feeling well. If you're having any mental struggles, I think just running yourself into the ground, doing some activity is the best way to go about it, whether it's just, I don't know, if, if you like going to the gym. To me, it's absolutely going to the ocean. I think the ocean is one of the most healing places on the planet. So jumping in the water for me is like the best thing I can do, whether it's a surf or a swim, the ocean just feels like so healing. I think it's the best thing you can do. You know, Taj brings up a really good point that people in the southwest have access to the ocean, the forest, spearfishing, hiking. This exists and it's accessible for everyone in the southwest to explore. It's not just the isolation and it's not just the drugs and alcohol that exist in the southwest. We do have an opportunity to lean into these more natural elements to kind of help us explore ourselves. I am aware of some people struggling and I've seen a lot of uh, cases of, of suicide and it just breaks my heart to think of someone struggling that much. It just breaks my heart that they think that's you know, the only option. So like I said, getting in the ocean and surfing is one of the greatest things you can do and I think being on a, in a place like this, it's good for the youth. The most important message I could think of would be to get outdoors, you know, be amongst nature and find something you love to do that's outdoor and active. Being indoors, in front of the phone, social media is probably one of the worst things for this generation of kids growing up. That shit's not real. You want to get away from it. It can really affect you mentally. It's not real. You got to get outdoors and find something you love that's outdoors and active. And like I said, for me, it's the ocean. Even if it's just a swim, I need to be in the salt water, you know, once a day just to get recharged and just get that mental clarity. Uh, you just feel grateful for this stretch of coast we live on and you feel grateful for just being fit and active and, and able to enjoy it. But yeah, that's my most important message, just to get outdoors and find something you love. So my name is Mia McCarthy, I live in Margaret River, I've been surfing for about 12 years. I have competed around the world and around WA and um, yeah, absolutely love surfing. <laughs> such a young age, I did gymnastics for about six or so years. I think up in, from like six to 12, loved my gymnastics, actually won a state title in gymnastics. And then I think dad took me surfing one day and I was like, kind of planted a seed and I was like, oh, this is like a lot funner than the gym, like being in the ocean and stuff. And then I think I just kept asking dad to take me surfing and he's a really good surfer himself. So he obviously was frothing and kept taking me surfing and um, yeah, I loved it. Surfing has such a positive effect on my mental health. When I am surfing and getting in the water regularly, like I'm such a happy and I feel like I'm a better person when I'm surfing and stuff like that. And I know this because when I have been out of the water, like not surfing, I'm the complete opposite and I feel the negative effects of not surfing. So I know surfing has such a big role in my life. Definitely like Throughout my years of competing, the hardest thing for me was always like losing in events. It was really hard for me to handle that. And I think some of those moments like they do now, I reflect on it and I'm like, oh, that probably made me really resilient and probably made me a stronger person because of it. But at the time they were really, really hard. And I think also like growing up in Margaret River, surfing is so valued and everybody kind of like loves that you surf and all of that but soon as you start doing something else like for me I've started studying the last couple of years and surfing's still a big part of my life but it's not everything and I think that little bit of feeling of like maybe getting judged for not you know competing and as much as I used to and that kind of thing that can be a little bit of a challenge at times. 
when I was younger, I always looked up to someone called, a surfer called Sally Fitzgibbons. And I remember seeing in an interview that she said she didn't drink, so that she was up early for a surf and she felt healthy. And to me, like, I really looked up to her and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I'm not gonna drink either. And that's something that I said when I was like 14 or, you know, when I wasn't that interested. But now I'm 24 and I still haven't had a drink because I really do prioritize being healthy. And I feel like when you have something that motivates you like surfing, you're more inclined to like make these other right decisions. When Mia talks about social media, it goes to show that not everyone actually lives the life that they're presenting on Instagram. You see these professional surfers, you see these people of influence and you go, I wish my life was like that. Well, you know, as she said, it's not always the case. Instagram, I feel like is a tricky one. Like it's easy to look on the screen and be like, these people's lives are so perfect and they're so pretty and they're so popular and they're getting all these comments and follows and I don't know, it's really easy to compare yourself to that. And when you're looking at it, you're probably like sitting in bed or like on your way to school and it's comparing your life to these people's lives. You know, for me personally, like looking at my profile account, I feel like my life isn't what my account looks like. My account looks like I'm having fun all the time and I'm always happy, but that's just the stuff that I'm posting. Like there's definitely days that are really hard or really boring or, you know, like there's still days that aren't look like what my Instagram, that's definitely a highlight reel or, you know, there'll be times where I'll post a photo, but what people don't know is I've taken, you know, 50 or 100 photos. <laughs> I've picked the best one where, you know, the lighting's right and my head's still, you know, in the right angle or something like that, you know, but then if you're a young person seeing that, it could be hard if you're comparing yourself to that one little moment out of a hundred photos or something like that. I think down south, there's actually a really good opportunity to have good mental health. Like we have such beautiful beaches and beautiful forests. And I think our community is a really caring and loving community. And I think for young people, it's important to remember that as well. Like it is easy to focus on the negatives. You know, there is a little bit of isolation and stuff like that, but I think being a young person growing up in the Southwest, I think there's actually some really awesome things that can help your mental health. Like I think I'd love to spread that message. I'm almost wishing that we could inspire that kind of hope with young people in the Southwest who can see all of these surfers who are reflecting about their story, that are opening up about what's going on, not hiding from it and not putting it in the shadows, but putting it in the light and seeing how they can navigate that. Jay Davies has a very special place in my heart. He was one of the people who opened up the door for us to be able to do this interview series because he could see something different about what we were doing, about the importance of lived experience, the importance of relatability, and the importance of documenting what's going on. Very confronting for... It was funny because there was so many people that were really happy to hear from my experiences, I guess, with my mental health. I guess they were pretty proud for me to stand in front of a camera and be vulnerable, I guess, which was great feedback for me because in the big picture, it just shows that it's not just someone in your life that's going through hardship. It's like the whole world is going through hardship in certain ways. Like you could have it all and still have hard time in your mind. A lot of people gave me good feedback. I love how we can just admit that your journey is not always going to be linear. You're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to be in a great space. But then again, you can tremble down to darkness. I guess life throws curveballs at you all the time. And after I spoke to you last year, a similar thing happened to me in a way. It's almost like the universe doing the exact same thing. Like you have to do this again. Like you didn't learn properly the first time and which was something that I didn't realize at the time. I thought I was like, yeah, I feel healthy. I was doing the right things. I was fit and healthy again. I wasn't partying, I wasn't abusing my body anymore. But then I went 
and had an accident, ended up in hospital, had some health issues that caused me to sit still and then there's some uh, relationship and other issues that happened as well at the same time. So it took me to a place where I was really inside my own space and I um, had realised that I hadn't been dealing with a lot of my own issues, like directly, and I didn't have the tools. So I ended up seeing a therapist, which allowed me to have a really comfortable, sacred space, dive deeper into issues that I didn't think were relevant at the time or old trauma from childhood and all kinds of different like aspects of my life leading up to the moment. To be honest, it was like the most powerful work I've ever done. Throughout a lifetime of like having this persona of being a powerful surfer or like having to be this rigid ego that like I was always invincible, but like I was definitely not. Like I'm pretty soft at the core, like, like everyone, you know, like you need tools to be able to work out who you are really. And that's what therapy actually allowed me to do. I guess like the pressure of our society is you have to be busy, you have to be busy, you have to be doing good things, you have to show that you've got all this fucking bull. And it might not be from our society, it's more from our internal mind that with the system you know like social media a lot of people don't show the shit stuff which if you're not talking about it with your friends of your heartache or the things that are going wrong in your life you just think everyone's killing it and if you're not killing it you're like i'm done but realistically everyone is struggling every day but you need quality routine like you need to believe in yourself and you just need the tools to work on yourself. It all starts with yourself, I think. It's a, such a bummer that we've had so much suicide in this area, let alone the whole world, because we've got the power to fix it, but it's only yourself that can fix it. Like, we have a society that is getting a lot more aware of everything and being able to open up to friends and what you guys are doing with 20 Talk is like amazing because it is allowing personalities like myself to show that we're not all killing it. Like when we're all human, like I can ride a wave a certain way, like that doesn't matter at all. It's fucking bullshit really. That's just a release for us. It's working. You need to start working. Like no one's gonna show up for you. Trust me, I've been there and no one's sitting in on the corner of the couch going, are you okay? Because it's not up to them. It's, it starts with you and you just need to really like and start working. Like it's a job, like it's not meant to be easy because we'll all be like sitting around fucking overweight, not doing our best life, you know, not living our best life. And like, it takes a lot of work to be the best you can be. I feel like Jay Davies has a big opportunity to be a leader in the mental health community in the southwest of WA. There's no doubt in my mind, there's a lot of young people that look up to him and he can be that voice, that voice for change. I would love to see that happen. Jamaica. She's very inspirational to young women, speaking up about her story. You know, she's had anxiety, she's lost her mother, yet she's deciding to speak up. Hi, my name's Jamaica Selby. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Margaret River, Western Australia. Growing up in Margaret River was pretty special. Like we grew up by the ocean and all we did was surf and hang out at the beach and we barely ever watched TV or did any of that kind of stuff. It was just, yeah, really outdoor kind of growing up experience. Yeah, I'm super thankful for the lifestyle that I got to have growing up as a kid. 
I did have a few things growing up, so I definitely did experience it. It would have been when I had lost my mum when I was 13. That would have been when I experienced it, I guess, but there was just no one to talk to about it. And I was so young, so I don't know if it ever affected me that, or I just didn't know when I was younger, but definitely like within the last few years of growing up and experiencing things, I definitely have felt anxiety and it's definitely impacted my mental health for sure. Now you can talk about it, so that's, that's awesome. For sure, I think as surfers, we can all probably say that surfing is therapy <laughs> and it is like a form of meditation and you do notice that the days you go without it is when you actually feel like you're struggling a bit and then as soon as you're back in the water, well personally for me, I find it's just a bit of a release and it's definitely a form of therapy and clears your head space. In the southwest, there's been a significant amount of suicides over the last few years. There's no escaping the reality that everyone's been affected in some way or another by a suicide. A lot of the suicides have been surfers, which is crazy, but um, I definitely feel like maybe there's not the resources. As I said, like to me it feels like a form of therapy, but there's obviously something going on, like an underlying issue, because a lot of the suicides are coming from surfers, so we definitely were behind because we were lacking the resources and there's just no one talking about it. What should change is, I guess, spreading more awareness on social media like you guys are doing and like I guess if I can do that as well then I want to do that and that's what I'm trying to do but also just even forming like little social groups down there like a space where people can catch up after work or before work and like you know if guys need to sit down or if girls need to sit down like sit down and chat over a coffee or go for a surf and just talk about it like I feel like something like that I feel like that would be a really useful tool rather than sitting in like a room you know. I feel like the community has come together so much. Everyone is really talking and I guess checking in on each other a lot more. And I think people are wanting to make, you know, something happen, like almost forming groups and stuff like that. Like people definitely want change because it's impacting the community down there heavily, like all the families and friends. And I feel like it is bringing people together a lot more than what it was in the past. And people are definitely talking about their experiences and whatever's going on in their lives. It's cool to talk about it really, like, you know, there's no shame in talking about it and if it can save someone's life, then you're better off talking about it. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are around you that want to support you and help you or, or like, you know, even people like what you guys are doing. There's people there that want to help, so yeah, there's no shame in talking about it. And from 18 to 24, anxiety is the biggest burden of disease in the Southwest. Young people feeling as anxious as ever, and they don't feel like they have the tools and skills to tackle that. We know mental health is important, but what do we actually do to navigate that, to educate young people, to take the next step and to seek support? Awareness is important, but we need to learn how to integrate these tools and educations to the next step. And that's something we want to do in the future. Jerome's the kind of guy that is dedicated. Once he sees something and he understands it, he'll go out and get it. And that's from his surfing life all the way to his mental health experience. Hey, my name's Jerome Forrest. I'm 33 years old and I'm from Margaret River in Western Australia. Yeah, since I've been living down here, my love for the ocean and stuff escalated and surfing quite quickly took over and it's given me the life that I um, can't thank my family and my friends enough for um, giving me this lifestyle and stuff. Through living down here and the wave quality that we get, I sort of fell into competing and I started at a state level and that grew into a Australian level, into a world level. I competed on the WQS for five or six years and then I sort of turned to the free surfing avenue since then, I'm still doing stuff like that, but I also have a trade. I'm a roof plumber, and I'm also the president of the Margaret River Board Riders. I guess for me, like, as a person, 
living and having the ocean so close to it. It's such an amazing avenue, just as that like, you, somewhere you can go and just release anything, like all your worries, you know, whether it be a surf or a swim on a cold day or a hot day, every time you leave the ocean, you walk out and you feel alive and you feel rejuvenated and it's just a really amazing feeling. A lot has happened for Jerome over the last year. He's been put in the position where he's had to take extreme ownership of his story to make sure he's putting the best possible Jerome forward despite the world throwing so much shit at him. There's been a lot of talk around mental health for men and it's a very touchy subject, I think. I have personally been going through some stuff this last year that has really made me take a look at myself and the human being that I want to be. I was never a person that thought that I needed to speak to a counsellor because instantly when you hear the word counsellor or oh, I'm seeing a counsellor, people think that, oh, what's wrong with you? When you don't necessarily have to speak to a counsellor to have something wrong with you. And that's where I was, you know, brought to um, speaking to a counsellor. It was mainly because I was confused. I was confused at the situation I was in and what I was dealing with. Because a counsellor is someone that doesn't know you, they're not invested in you like your family members are, because your friends and your family, as amazing as it is to talk to them, they are invested in what's best for you. Where sometimes you just need to speak to someone outside of your group to really break down what is going on and how to deal with it. I've always trained and surfed and stuff like that and been pretty healthy, but I also partied and stuff like that as well. It wasn't until I started going through this that I really realised the best thing for me was to stop everything and get into a routine and really work on discipline. And so I did that for like five or six months. It built a foundation for me as a person to grow be accountable and acknowledge every single thing that was going on in my life. The clarity that you get out of doing something like this speaks for itself because you grow as a person. It makes you a better person on the inside and on the outside. You know when you, you meet someone and there's a weight to them and you look in their eyes and you know they've been through a lot, they can handle a lot. It feels like Jerome's one of those people that has a lot of weight on his shoulders. With that weight on his shoulders, you know, he had two options. Do I be the victim, resort to escapism, drugs and alcohol, or do I take responsibility for my mind, for my body, for my emotions? And that's what he's done. So for me, the discipline side of things, the routine side of things, was a key factor into me, I believe, into not falling into a place of depression and stuff like that. And still to this day, even though I'm coming out of it and I'm in a good place mentally, physically, I still have the drive to keep the discipline up because I feel like even though it's heading in the right direction, if I don't continue on this path of discipline and being accountable for my actions, it'll be easy to slip into somewhere that I don't want to be. So I guess what I want to say as well is like, is anyone going through a hard time or a tricky situation, whether it be a separation or, you know, something's happened in your life, you know, it's just not going your way. My advice to you guys is, Look at an avenue where you can exhaust your energy and your anger, work on being a better person, not for anyone else, but for yourself. Because once you do that, everything will start working out for you. The amount of courage it must have taken Bronte Macaulay to accept our invitation to speak about her story. It's absolutely courageous. There's no doubt in my mind, stepping into that interview for her would have felt 
scarier than stepping into one of the biggest waves she's probably ever surfed. I know how much that would have taken for her, having lost her brother two years ago to suicide. Speaking out for the first time, it's never gonna be an easy thing to do. I'm Bronte McCauley. I'm from Greystown, Western Australia. I'm a professional surfer and um, yeah, here today to talk about mental health. Growing up, I feel like I didn't really have a hard time with my mental health. Everything was quite smooth sailing. Um, but yeah, I lost my brother by suicide in 2021. And yeah, since then I've struggled with my mental health. Jack's death has caused ripples in the Southwest community. I've spoken to so many people who have been moved by his passion, his love and his empathy for other people. Yeah, basically I just felt like numb for a long period of time and felt like I didn't really enjoy a lot of the activities that I used to enjoy and just felt a bit like a zombie really, going through the motions day to day. Um, so yeah, this persisted on for about eight to ten months. So at that stage I went and saw a GP to get a mental health plan so I could get a referral to see a psychologist. And she went through like a mental health test with me and said like, oh yeah, you seem like you're quite depressed and I said, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> but at the, at the same time, I was so closed off, like I didn't even tell my family and friends um, or my boyfriend that I'd gone to see a GP or anything. But yeah, I'd got home that day and saw my boyfriend and he said, oh, your eyes look, um, you know, quite puffy and red. And I said, oh, it's just hay fever. Yeah, the way I was so closed off and couldn't express myself definitely made me think that there's probably a lot of people around feeling like this, you know, having all these dark thoughts and feelings, but not having the courage to speak up. So I definitely got a lot of empathy through this whole experience. Well, I feel like when I first started speaking to a psychologist, it was probably like getting blood out of a stone for her. <laughs> I would just like not really say much. And yeah, for me, I still find it really challenging, honestly, like it's a work in progress. But for a period of time, I would just write down what I'm feeling on my notes on my phone. And then I found it too hard to verbalise. So I think like it takes a lot of courage to speak up and I feel like people say you know speak to your mates and stuff but it's actually quite challenging so um, if you can't speak it write it and you know even if you don't show anyone it's just nice to get it out of your head onto the paper. I heard a really cool saying it was like hope stands for hold on pain eases so when I'm in a difficult situation I just remember like right, hold on you know pain eases it's going to get easier and I feel like just hope in general is a really powerful thing because I know people have days, months, years where they're struggling but having hope that it's going to get easier in the future down the track. Just like yeah staying strong and um, yeah keep going. I think people are still struggling to have the conversations like like I'm like a prime example but like I still don't feel comfortable talking to a lot of my friends about it. So I think it's like obviously about educating yourself on how to just support someone else. So like finding a private setting, asking the right questions and um, not being scared to ask questions such as, you know, are you suicidal or, you know, have you got a plan? Like I was surprised when I found out that was a question that, you know, you could ask. Um, but I read that in Australia, one in every six person, you know, thinks about dying by suicide in their lifetime. So. Yeah, I think it's a lot about educating yourself on how to support someone as well as helping your own self. Funding is a big issue. I know like if you go to the GP and get a mental health care plan, you get 10 sessions where you get rebates from Medicare. But I think for a lot of people, they still can't afford that. So I think like nationally that has to change. Like, you know, it's not a laugh. Like, some people are pri privileged and can do it, but others can't. So I think that has to change. And I think just the education, like what's the practical steps once someone is not okay? Like just asking, you know, are you okay? Isn't really enough anymore, I don't think. I think you have to go deeper than that, which I feel like, yeah, there isn't really the education yet on how to support someone who's really struggling. We've heard of Are You Okay Day. We know mental health is an issue. You know, the awareness is everywhere in the modern day. But what do we actually do about it? How do we engage with a psychologist? How do we learn about mental health? How do we understand the fundamental elements that affect how we feel? 
And that's the next step of the journey and something that we want to provide in the Southwest. We want to have more of a presence. We want to eventually hire someone to work down in Margaret River or Dunsborough to run free training on a consistent basis. We want to hire someone that does consistent interviews sharing the stories of all different people who may have experienced a mental illness. To have the courage to speak up about how you're feeling and know that you're not alone and there's a lot of people feeling the same way as you so uh, it's not unusual. There is help out there like yeah it's hard work obviously <laughs> um, but there's help out there and um, their support. Yeah try to hold on in this difficult time um, but yeah I definitely believe that things will improve for you. Through that pain they can share their experience and hopefully someone out there can get something where they can learn, grow, adapt and manage what's going on for them in their own life. Stepping into that story is never going to be easy, but it is worth it. I'm Finn and co-founder of uh, Flow State. My background is in teaching. My name's Brooke, co-founder of Flow State and I'm a mental health therapist working in Margaret River. Hey, hello, my name's Rob. Yeah, I'm a mental health therapist too. Passionate surfer and ocean lover. And Flow State really came out of uh, the three of ours backgrounds in mental health therapy and teaching and passion for the natural environment and our own lived experience of having mental health challenges and sort of combining those two to start flow states so that we can provide innovative way for young people and adults to you know get support with their mental health when you know being involved in the ocean you know it's out here it's, it's pretty awesome we really felt there was an opportunity to provide people more access to mental yeah. health support and we really need it in our community and our community you know has had a lot of tragedy in this area and we really wanted to give young people and adults you know access to mental health support when they might not usually reach out to it because of like stigma or just a lack of awareness and so you know using surfing is a great way to get people sort of talking about mental health and mm. coming to programs and encouraging their mates to come to programs. And I think it's about wanting to shine a light on, on mental health you know and people's mental health experiences and trying to have that movement with you know just like our physical health fluctuates over time so too does our mental health and it's okay you know and it's normal and um, it's healthy and so being able to talk about mental health issues or experiences is so important in trying to make that culture shift. We see young people, 12 to 25 mainly. We do want to, in the future, move to seeing adults as well. And, you know, these people have usually had some mental health experience, but also people that don't, you know, also people that just want to learn about, you know, mental wellbeing and how do I stay healthy. We've seen like some really good um results as well from participants and feedback from parents and mental health professionals too yeah it's been really encouraging it's like it's why we do it it's yeah overwhelmingly positive and particularly when we hear stories of young people who have tried to engage in typical mental health supports and we're definitely not dissing typical mental health no. because we work we in are. typical yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the fact that there's there's other avenues for people who might not be for whatever reason stigma access awareness be able to engage in those mm -hmm. sort of typical therapy supports the fact that they've been able to come to our programs and they have their parents or other supports in their life have described a low benefit has mm -hmm. been probably the most rewarding, rewarding. part of Absolutely. it so far yeah, yeah. Mason is one of the most empathetic, warm-hearted men I've ever met. There's so much that's happened for him over the last few years and we'll hear about that really shortly. But I'm so proud of how Mason stepped up to the plate and how Mason has been extremely vulnerable to sit this interview. Hi, I'm Mason Gibbs. I grew up in Perth in the northern suburbs. I moved down south and lived down here for the last six years and just recently moved back up to Perth. I've been through a bit of a journey the last couple of years, gone through some series of psychosis and it has been quite difficult for me and a few other people around me. The first sort of realisations of psychosis for me were 
grand ideas and an enhancement of emotions which uh, arose around 2022. And they started to become a concern for other people around me. I had lots of uh, grandiose ideas. Some of the thoughts that were going through my head were lots of uh, money and land and stuff like that that just didn't make a lot of sense to the people around me and it was just a underlying issue. I could disguise my psychotic behaviour in a way so people didn't recognise me, so I still had good social interaction. It was just an underlying problem which started to affect my behaviour. It got pretty bad. It just got very manic, lots of highs where my behaviour was not appropriate. <laughs> and yeah, at the time I thought I could get away with the stuff that I was doing, but in reality it's not sustainable. Yeah, it was difficult and I could tell there was stress on others at the time, just knowing how to handle my situation. It was tough because when people were trying to put a halt on me and trying to slow me down, I didn't take that too well. It was hard for everyone, hey, it was just a tough time at certain periods of my life and recently um, and it did affect others. Yeah, there was a few periods where I sort of seeked help in a few various ways, whether it be through a couple of close friends of mine, one of them being Lockie, who works with you guys. Then I also seeked help through a few holistic matters, as being like sound healing and lots of yoga. I was doing lots of holistic and spiritual sort of healing. But then eventually it got to the point where I was working with a psychiatrist and they eventually put us onto some medication and it's cool to went from there. It's really come to terms with it now after being on some antipsychotic. That was probably the biggest part of it all for me was coming to terms with these delusions and the psychotic behavior, which I didn't accept in the first couple of years going through this whole journey. But once I'd um, accepted them and realised that there was a problem which was affecting me and my friends and family. Then I really owned the issue and I'm finding a lot of better understanding now on everything and how to handle the situations if it were to happen again. Over the last few years, Mason has faced the full effects of what that psychosis looks like and that's affected his relationships, his personal health. But despite all this pain, Despite all this suffering he's gone through, he's decided to share that story with you so you can help understand what it's like for someone going through psychosis. I feel like I'm in a much calmer state now. I haven't been working much, but it's been really de-stressful and moving forward, I just want to slowly get back into work and integrate back into society a little bit better. I want to avoid these super highs that I've had before. Whilst they felt good, like I said, they weren't sustainable. And just want to slow down and sort of take it all in as it really is in, in reality. I think to stay on top now, I just have to be aware of what the problem is, stay aware of what the problem is and be aware of um, when I feel like I'm slipping at all um, and just staying on top of that. I feel like moving forward, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna go forward with positivity, but just maintaining that calm state of mind is really important. As you can hear from the stories, mental health isn't always sunshine and rainbows, but as a community, we can come together. We can lift each other up. I want to thank all the surfers who have made this possible, who have stepped up to the plate to help you, to help me, and to help the Southwest transform from where it used to be to a place where we can really maintain and support people's mental health. If we can come together with this in mind, I think we actually have a very strong chance on transforming the mental health experience for individuals in the Southwest. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for believing in yourself and in the possibility that 
the southwest can change. Anybody was in a really high state and you feel like, ah, fucking B. <laughs> no. It got me. Dude.